Hi, welcome back to my channel. In the for today's video, we will be talking about the basis for a given topology. And thank you so much for all your support. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be updated on a lot of videos that I'll be uploading soon. Okay, on the previous video, we, we've talked about the introduction to topology. This time, we will be talking about the basis for a given topology. Now, um, in order for us to start on that, let us recall first in the linear algebra that, um, let's say, our V here is a vector space over a field F. So, assuming that this vector space is finite dimensional, this finite dimensional vector space over a field F, there exists a basis um, v1 up to vn of v such that uh, for every vector in the vector space you can write this vector as the sum of the basis so that is a linear combination of the elements of the basis your ai here of course is coming from your field f whether it's a real number or it's a complex set. So suppose your V, your vector space is R3, then um, this is um, X, Y, and Z here. Then the basis A, E1, E2, E3, so the trivial basis, then technically this E1, E2, and E3 would actually generate entirely the R3. So that's the idea of the basis. Now, so when we talk about the basis for a topology, that means that it somehow generates the topology. So what is the formal definition of a basis for topology? Given that you have a topological space, so that's tau over the x, uh, any given set x, a family of script B, which is a subset of the tau, is called a basis for tau if its open set is the union of members of B. So it sounds so uh, deep, but let me uh, rewrite that into a different way of um, expressing this definition. So this means to say that, so this means to say that the script B um, of subsets of X, so this is technically a collection of subsets, if uh, is a basis if number one, for every X in X, there exists at least one basis element, script B, containing X, sorry, it should be small here, and number two, if x is an element of let's say the open ball b1 intersection b2 then there exists b3 containing x such that your b3 is a subset of b1 intersection b2 so um in other words if you have a topology here and then you have open balls b1 and b2 you will actually find an x here at which you can actually find another open ball that contains the x and this open ball is actually a subset of the intersection of two open balls that's it okay so let's consider this for example you have the um topological space here so basically our set here is r um and you have b containing the interval a b where your a and b are elements of r and um your a is less than b here okay so why could i say that this b is a basis for your topological space r well, um this is a real line and um if you have the open interval here that contains the x you have let's say x minus one x plus one if you go one to the left and one to the right, you would actually obtain and um, 
open interval here. So even if you move again to the left or you move again to the right, you're actually containing an open interval. So basically, your x is an element of the inter open interval x minus 1 and x plus 1. Number 2, um, let's say if it satisfies this way, if your x here is an element of um, AB intersection CD, so let's say you pick element here, um, let's say this is AB, and you pick another element, uh, let's say, I mean an open interval here, which is let's say CD, so you would actually find an x here in between. And so this x here is an element of the intersection. So this intersection here is, this intersection here contains the x. So it satisfies the property. And so this b here is, an, is a basis for a topology. Okay, so another example is, um, this is trivial. Um, um, if you would say uh, that tau is actually a basis for tau, meaning to say that uh, the tau generates itself. So that's a trivial statement. And uh, let's say we have this D, a discrete topology, and um, this discrete topology on X, then um, your B containing the single tone X, such that your X is in X, is actually a basis for your D. Meaning to say that this alone can generate entirely the um, discrete topology. Okay, so we will consider an illustration example here. So let's say we have script B, B the collection of all circular regions, interiors of circles in the plane. Then B satisfies the both conditions of a basis. So to illustrate on that, let's say um, we have these uh, B1 and B2 here. So technically, um, your B contains all the BIs. Then um, you would find actually X here in the intersection at which this is contained in another B3. So that's technically the illustration for collections of circular regions. So that means um, B is a basis. Also, if you're given with a B prime, and this B prime is defined to be the collection of all rectangular regions, so interiors of rectangles in the plane where the rectangles have sides parallel to the coordinate axis. So, um, to illustrate why this B prime is a basis topology, because um, let's say this is my um, B1 prime here. Um, this is my B2 prime. So basically, I can find an x here, at which this one also is another b prime. Let's say, let's call it as b3 prime. So therefore, this is a basis topology. That's it. So before we end this video, we will be dealing first with a claim, a theorem at which we will be able to generalize what a basis is. So... After this video, we will still be continuing with the discussion for a topology on our next series. So for now, let's focus on this theorem. It says here that if your script B is contained in tau, then the script B is a basis for a tau if and only if for every G in tau and for every X in G, there exists U which is in the B, script B, with X element in U. And that's U is a subset of G. So, how do we prove that? We let X be in G. Okay. Now, uh, remember that um, since G here is an element of tau and um, B is a basis, so that means we assume here and we move, we prove the forward. So we will prove this forward direction. So script um, B is a basis. Then um, you can write G as the union of all U alpha where your U alpha is in script B. So what does it imply? This implies that there exists at least one U 
let's say beta in script b with x in u script b beta and this um is a subset of g because your g contains all the union that's it so if you have any questions or clarification you can comment down there so we're done with the forward direction of the proof so let's go backward so that means if suppose um this holds then this will automatically follow okay so let g be in tau okay so if g is in tau then for every x in g we can find u sub x in the script b with um this small x contains in the u sub x and that's a subset of g um this implies that um your g because this you can find this u sub x present in g which means to say that if you this x is present also in the union so that means this is the union of all ux such that x is in g and so this represents the basis so therefore script b is the basis that's all so that's all for now thank you so much for watching so thank you for your understanding and have a great day to you bye for now